Hey, I just got my soil test back for my new food plots. I'll try to put a, a PDF of this available down below so you can take a look at it. So, going over this thing, I see that we we have some pretty acid soils. It's, it's a new food plot just scratched out of the, the forest. And the first and foremost thing that we have to take a look at is that soil pH, which is 5.3. 5.3 is not going to let you grow much of anything that we like to grow for forage crops for deer. Uh, lots of native plants will grow in that kind of pH. But we also want to have, uh, you know, really rich, nutritious, attractive, palatable uh, type of growth. So we need to get that up to a 6.5 to 6.8, somewhere in that range. And according to my soil test, it's going to take 6,000 pounds of lime per acre. So I have 6,000 pounds, and that is calcium carbonate equivalent, is the way they give it to you. And that simply means how much calcium carbonate is in your lime. Okay, so if my lime is, is an 80% CCP, uh, then you would divide 0.8 uh, into that and you would end up with a little more than 6,000 pounds, okay? But the lime that I use is pretty pure. Uh, I'm short on magnesium, so I'm going to use a, a mag lime, okay, the dolomitic limestone. So I can get either one at that plant where I get it. I'm going to buy it by the triaxial load because I have about five acres of food plot to do out there. And it's a lot cheaper just to put it in a truck, dump it there, and then feed it into a spreader with a bobcat, okay? So that's a lot of lime, and, and let's talk about that for just one second. What I plan on doing there uh, is to put half the lime on, and then I'm gonna run a stone crusher across the whole food plot, and crush all the rocks that are there, it's very stony, stony stony ground so uh, we're working on that if you've been watching my videos you can see my project it's quite a project we're, we're going over it with a dozer with a root rake and trying to get the big goonies out and then scratching through it with a with a uh, excavator also to get the big stones out and then we're going to work our way down uh, with different equipment to get down to small stones and then we're going to crush what's left and it should be a pretty smooth food plot by but I think it's going to work out great to put the lime on and probably half the, or half, half the lime, half the fertilizer, grind it, then level it with a, a field finisher, okay, so it's nice and even and, and a nice level food plot, and then I'll put the rest of the amendments on and then seed it. That way uh, the lime will take effect a lot quicker and we won't lose any of our nitrogen because it will be tilled in. Okay. Nitrogen can disappear on you either through leaching or evaporation. Uh, usually you don't have that problem depending on where you buy it. I buy mine in, in bulk at Growmark and what they do is uh, they put a coating on it that keeps it from evaporating for you. So in this test uh, I tested for three crops which is brassicas, wheat, and clover. So I'm going to use all three of those in that plot. Um, brassicas take a lot of nitrogen, but they're they're pretty good about growing in this in these forest soils. They're they're not real finicky. Wheat needs a lot of good nutrient. Uh, I put a a high um, yield on there, a yield goal. When they ask you for your yield goal, I usually put something that's not the maximum, but somewhere in between. So I put, for brassica, I put, I, I wanted four tons to the acre. Wheat, I want 100 bushels, and uh, three tons for my clover. That's realistic, and uh, that'll give you the recommendation to hopefully reach that goal. But when you read these numbers, keep in mind that these numbers represent the amount of fertilizer you want to put on that will, that any more than this number 
is not likely to give you any gain of growth and yield. Okay? So these numbers mean that it's it's enough to grow your crop, but it's not, you know, more isn't going to give you more uh, benefit, more economical benefit. So I get my stuff custom mixed. I just take my my test down and say, hey, mix me up a, a batch of this. And they put it in a big bag, and then I can feed it, either shovel it or, or dump it into a cyclone spreader and spread it. But uh, sometimes people write in on, on the uh, Facebook and YouTube and ask, how much of this 10-10-10 should I put on my clover? Well, first of all, you need a soil test. Second of all, um, you may not want to go with just that fertilizer that you have down at the, the uh, feed mill or the hardware store. Um, and I, I want to do a math problem here just to illustrate how you would go about getting to the numbers that are on your test when you just have bags of loose fertilizer. Okay, so. Let's say that you go down to the store and they have on hand some triple 19 fertilizer. And in my soil test, the worst case scenario is the wheat that's going to require most of my nutrients. So I'm going to, I'm going to fertilize for the wheat because I want a really good stand of wheat this fall to get the deer through the winter. Okay. Now they're requiring 100 pounds of nitrogen and, uh, and 140 each of the phosphate and uh, Potash. So, how do you get that out of my triple 19? Well, it's not going to come out even. So, let's take the, the lowest number, which is 100, and 19 is, uh, in, what that number means, if you don't know, is that in 100 pounds of this material, 19 pounds of N, P, and K, okay, each. So we have 19 pounds of nitrogen in there, and we need uh, 100. So that means we need uh, 90, we need uh, 500 pounds of this, okay, to get to, because, you know, 520s are 100. So that'll give us our 95 pounds, that's close enough. Now there's two bags for every 100 weight because they're 50 pound bags. So that means we're going to need 10 bags. Okay? So we need 500 pounds because 5 times 19 will get us our 100 pounds or 100 units of nitrogen. And a bag is 50 pounds, so we need 10 bags. So now, what do you do about getting the rest of your nutrients without going over on nitrogen? You don't want to go over on nitrogen because it's a waste of money and it's pollution. So you don't want to get too high. You can do the same kind of math with, with all of this. It's just an example. So let's say, for instance, they also have at the store a 0-20-20 bag of fertilizer. So what's left? We have 40 pounds left to go on our are phosphate and potassium, okay? So we take our, our 20 pounds that are in our, in our analysis of the fertilizer, and so we know that we need two of these, or 200 pounds, okay? Because we need the 40 pounds, we need, we need a double dose, right? We need 200 pounds of fertilizer and since they're 50 pound bags, you need four bags of that. So what we end up with is to get to this analysis of 100, 140, 140, we're going to buy 10 bags of the triple 19 and we're going to buy four bags of that 0, 20, 20. We're going to mix it in our cyclone spreader or spread one and then spread the other so it's even and then you'll have what it called for, okay? But if you have any place that will custom mix this stuff, that would be great.
Um, it's a lot cheaper to do it that way. You can take a dump trailer or some kind of container and just have them put the elements in there. And uh, sometimes they'll custom mix them for you. Or you can just take a shovel and kind of shovel it around in your dump trailer. I've done that already. And then just shovel it into your cyclone spreader that way. So that's about it for the NPK. Um, looking down at the bottom here, uh, my micros are about typical for Pennsylvania. They're kind of low. Um, it wouldn't hurt to put a little elemental sulfur. Uh, we're going to get our magnesium out of the lime. It requires magnesium, so we'll use a dolomitic limestone. And, uh, oh, I got an organic matter test done. And I'm proud of myself because we were very careful not to take any of the topsoil or as little of the topsoil away from the site as possible. That's why I'm using a, uh, an excavator with teeth and I'm using a, a dozer with a, uh, a root rake which has about seven inch teeth on it. And we're going out through there and sifting the stones and the roots and everything out and trying as hard as we can not to take any topsoil. You can't help it sometimes, but um, we're sifting through that pretty good. And we have a 4.3% organic matter and field crops, you're you're happy if you have that kind of oh well, you know, if you're if you're up around four or five percent, you're in really good shape. And then we're gonna use cover crop techniques and we're not gonna take any crop off of this field. We're gonna feed deer, the deer are gonna stand there and eat it and poop out the the results, okay? So it's gonna recycle itself, we're gonna have uh, you know lots of organic matter feeding into the soil, we're going to have a lot of soil bacteria, and everything's going to be fantastic hopefully. Uh, pretty high moisture site, so I'm not really worried about drought the way I am with most of my projects. Um, and so I guess that's about it for this soil test. Uh, let's see, what else can I talk about? The CEC is really low. But that'll change when I put the lime on. The lime's going to bring that up, and my calcium level will come up. And the only thing that you could probably do is maybe put a little bit of uh, micronutrients, which could be, if you really wanted to get down to the, to the fine point, you could always uh, put some liquid on when you spray it. So say you're spraying some... Uh, you're out there, you're going to spray some herbicide uh, on your clover. You can, if you're short on micros, you can, you can buy liquid micronutrients, put it in the tank, spray, and then put your herbicide on that same day. You can put that stuff on foliar, whatever. Um, so follow along. Uh, make sure you subscribe down below. and. Keep an eye on what we're doing out there. I'm going to try and make a lot of videos on this big project out in the Poconos. And hopefully um, you can see how we go about things. If you want to uh, have me come out and take a look at your property and see what we can do with it to get more deer on the property, let me know. And I'll be glad to come out and uh, meet with you on your land. All right, well, happy food plotting and good luck this fall. Uh, hunting season's right around the corner. I hope you're shooting your bow. I know I am. All right, see you later.